Hi everyone, how are you doing? Here we are in another week. For all of us, that will be in ups and downs. And we just keep on keeping on. This week, I've been reading the story of Joseph. Yes, he of Technicolor Dreamcoat fame. Uh, I've been reading that with our girls. And for one thing, it takes me back to my childhood. I spent hours, days in my bedroom singing along to my cassette. Yes, I'm that old. The cassette of the whole musical. And I would sing the whole thing. I know all the colours of the dream coat. Just saying. It's a great story. It's full of adventure and family drama and political strategy and, well, all, all the things that we're all scrolling through Netflix for at the moment. I highly recommend it. You will find it in the book of Genesis, chapters 37 to 50. But of course, having said that, spoiler alert, I'm going to be talking about some of the things I've been thinking about as we've been reading the story. Well, the biggest thing that has hit me reading the story of Joseph is that God is trustworthy even when we don't trust him. Joseph's life is full of ups and downs as ours are at the moment. He starts life as his father's favourite son and he grows up spoiled and self-absorbed. He gets special treatment, feels pretty good about himself. But of course his brothers get to a point where they just can't bear him anymore. And they decide, well, they decide not to kill him in the end, although they seriously consider that, but they sell him into slavery. Whoa. Joseph loses not only his special status as favourite, but he loses his freedom, he loses his identity, his whole way of life. Joseph would be forgiven for thinking that God had abandoned him, but... The refrain throughout the whole story of Joseph's life is what other people meant for harm, God uses for good. So Joseph was bought by a powerful and wealthy man who recognises Joseph's potential and the fact that God blesses everything that Joseph does. And he does really well. He ends up in a really good place. Until it all goes wrong again and Potiphar's wife takes her revenge and he gets put in prison for something he didn't do. Again, Joseph loses his special status, his freedom, his whole way of life. And he would be forgiven again for thinking that God had abandoned him. But again, what other people meant for harm, God uses for good. Joseph does really well in prison, ends up working for Pharaoh. And the dreams that he had as an arrogant young buck back in the day come true. His brothers do come and bow before him. What other people chose to do to harm Joseph, God used to fulfill his plan for good and for the blessing not only of Joseph and the blessing of his family, but the blessing of the whole nation as Joseph saves them from starvation in a time of total desolation. Now it's so easy for us to look at the details of our life, the experience of our every day, the immediate, what is here, and not look beyond. And perhaps, like Joseph, we can be forgiven for thinking that God has abandoned us, as we have lost so much of our freedom, possibly our identity, and everything else that we've lost in this time. But isn't it glorious when just every so often we see a glimpse of God at work. The gates of heaven open and we see the power of God's love at work, transforming people's hearts and lives. And just occasionally I feel, I experience the overwhelming embrace of God's grace. I feel free. I can see my life, I can see our world through God's eyes. I see the spiritual reality of what's going on above and beyond and around and through that other reality that we all live in. 
And I don't just know God's trustworthiness to be true in my head, but I believe it in my heart and my soul. Of course, it's only a glimpse and all too quickly my spiritual glasses fog up again and I'm right back into feeling overwhelmed or needing to control things or whatever it is that I do. But just because we look at our life and our world through our eyes most of the time, that doesn't mean that our point of view is more real than God's. God is at work redeeming people, healing communities, bringing about justice and making his kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. He's busy doing that all the time, whether or not we can see it. He's got a plan and he's on it. Whether or not we choose to participate consciously in what he's doing, whether or not we're looking for it. God can and does bring good out of bad all the time. Now, that doesn't mean that he wants people to do harmful or selfish things. He would never want to do that. He would never want that to happen. But what it does mean is that nothing is beyond the scope of God's power to fulfil his promises, beyond the scope of his power to bring us home, bring us out of the dark and into the light. Now, we don't know what he's doing through this time that we're all going through. But that doesn't mean that he's not doing anything. God is trustworthy even when we don't trust him. When Joseph is in prison, in the musical version of the story, he has his big number, close every door to me. And if you can bear it, I'm going to close with some of the lyrics of that song. I promise I will do my best not to burst into song. But I just think that we can learn something from Joseph's hard-learned capacity to trust God, even when he can't see what God is doing. Do please, obviously, read the original of the story. Don't just go by Tim Rice's lyrics. Anyway, here we are. Close every door to me, hide all the world from me, bar all the windows and shut out the light. Do what you want with me, hate me and laugh at me, darken my daytime and torture my night. If my life were important, I would ask whether I live or die. But I know the answers lie far from this world. So if we can drag our minds away from Jason Donovan, let's pray. Dear God, Thank you for your unfailing love, for never giving up on us even when we have given up on you. Help us to look with your eyes, to see the work of your Holy Spirit in us, through us and amongst us. Give us faith to trust you in these uncertain times. Give all those making decisions a glimpse of your plan so they and we can work with you to make your kingdom come. Amen. Take care, everybody, and I hope to see you soon.